Now, what do you think are India's biggest challenges vis-a-vis uh, -vis the environment? Well, India has huge challenges. I mean, at the moment, uh, we are, I think, way behind what would be considered acceptable standards in most developed countries in everything, whether it's water pollution, whether it's air pollution, whether it is respect for uh, nature in terms of uh, preserving tree cover, forest cover, and so on. But we are exercising a significant amount of political will to change that around. And it's not just political will. In fact, the first serious um, breakthrough in controlling air pollution in the capital of Delhi came not from a somewhat flabby executive, but from a judicial activism by a judge who decreed that all public transport in the city would have to switch to compressed natural gas. A Supreme Court judgment forced people to do something that the executive had been loath to impose. And so we're seeing, for example, I mean, right now I still think the air in Delhi is a long way from being what I would like to breathe, particularly in December, January, when the fog comes down and the smoke rises from the charcoal braziers on the sidewalks, keeping people warm. And the result is this impenetrable smog that is terrible for our respiratory systems. But having said that, it is a first step and a significant first step. When you realize that things are bad today by global standards, they were 10 times worse just 15 years ago. And that again is a sign that progress is being made. Secondly, I would say that we have to look at, uh, at ourselves uh, in a very self-interested way. I would say that we are the biggest victims of our own environmental deficiencies. Uh, when we are, are choking uh, on the way to hospital, when we are finding our lungs corroded by smoke and pollutants in the air, uh, equivalent to poke, smoking a pack of cigarettes a day in the Western world, when we are drinking unsafe water that needs to be filtered and treated and boiled before we can drink it, uh, and if we can't do all of those things, then we are falling prey to illnesses because of that. When we are finding toxins being thrown into our rivers, when we are finding that forests are being chopped down and trees are being removed, when we see all of that, who are the victims? They are ourselves. We are doing ourselves violence. We are harming ourselves. Uh, it is said that we are losing about 1% of our GDP every year to environmental setbacks. And if that is so, then when we boast of 8% growth, we're really saying 8% minus 1%. That is really sad and we have to accept that it is in our own self-interest to tackle our environmental challenges. I think that is happening politically. Our Ministry of Environment and Forest has become a fairly strong ministry. Most actions now involving significant economic development require clearance from the ministry. Now there needs to be a balance between, uh, uh, between shall we say, the challenges and needs of development and the, um, the, the need to protect the environment, but the balance can be found with a slight tilt towards the environment uh, because ultimately uh, the environment is something that ultimately will remain for generations yet unborn whereas the benefits of development are for us today but having said that we still have to respect the great needs we have as a nation uh, for economic development while at the same time recognizing that environment actually affects the effectiveness of our development.